Welcome to J Stern Designs. Today on Quick Tip Thursday, I'm going to show you how to fuse your interfacing onto the wrong side of your fabric. If you joined me earlier in the week, I gave a quick tutorial on how to pre-shrink your interfacing before using it. Um, so if you didn't check that out, maybe check that out first if you're working on a project. I just want to mention that there's a lot of variety in interfacing, so depending on the brand you're using and what the fiber content is, you may need to fuse your fabric on slightly different than how I'm going to show in this video. For this video, I'm using my Cotton Fuse 100% um, cotton fusible interfacing and it's pretty easy to work with and it fuses on in about 10 seconds. So, you know, just take a look at your instructions because you may need to, you know, hold your iron on your, your interfacing longer to fuse it. You may need a press cloth, you may need a damp press cloth, um, you may need a dry iron. So really take a minute and check to see what your specific instructions are for the interfacing that you're using. Um, the thing about this video that's good is it shows a nice technique for how to use the iron to press your interfacing without rubbing. There are two different techniques I like to use when I'm fusing interfacing to the wrong side of my fabric. Depending on the kind of pattern piece I'm working with and whether or not the fabric is challenging to work with, I may decide to fuse interfacing to it an entire piece of fabric and then cut the pattern piece out through both layers. This is really useful for fabrics that are tricky like Georgette or lighter weight um, silk charmeuse, those kinds of things. Um, and sometimes if I'm cutting something out on the bias and the pattern piece has a lot of curves to it, like if it was a round collar or such, I might want to I might want to have the interfacing already on the fabric. Um, the other way to cut out your interfacing and fuse it is to cut each piece out separately and then fuse them together. Let me show you both methods of fusing interfacing onto fabric and then you'll have two different ways to work with interfacing on your next project. So, you know, take a look and let me know if you have any comments or questions and let's get going. So as you can see here, I have a um, collar for a shirt cut out and I also have the interfacing cut out and ready to go. To sort of ease these wrinkles is to hover your iron and just give some gentle steam to the glue side of your interfacing just a little bit. Um, don't touch the iron to the glue because it will stick. But if you do that, then you can finger press it a little bit flatter and it isn't quite as wrinkly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my collar and I'm going to lay my interfacing glue side down on the wrong side of the fabric like this. And then I'm going to fuse the interfacing on. Now, if you're working with white or a light color, or if you're worried that your iron is dirty, you can certainly work with a press cloth. Um, I like to use a piece of lightweight muslin or cotton lawn. Um, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to start, I like to start in the middle, and I'm just going to place my iron onto the interfacing, and I'm just going to give it some gentle steam. And I'm just going to hold it down for about 10 seconds. And then I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to move it over to one side. I'm going to repeat. Steam. I'm going to press it about 10 seconds. Okay, and then I'm going to do the end. Okay, about 10 seconds. Now, the thing you don't want to do is rub back and forth with your iron because you could make the interfacing wrinkle on the back or you could make the fabric wrinkle onto the interfacing as you fuse. So make sure you're just patting it. So again, I'm going to place my iron on the side and I'm going to steam it. And then I'm going to do about 10 seconds. 
And then this final end over here, again, a little seam. I'm going to hold it down for about 10 seconds. All right, so as you can see, I've got my nicely fused collar, and you can see how nice and smooth it is from the right side. Okay, so that's how I would fuse interfacing um, when the two pieces are cut out um, separately. Now, in this second example, I've got a piece of fabric, you know, a rectangle of fabric, and I've got a rectangle of interfacing, and I'm going to put the, the fabric down first. Make sure you're putting wrong side face up. And then I'm going to put my interfacing glue side down. And then I'm going to fuse this in sections just like I fused my collar. So I'm just going to press and steam. 10 seconds. I'm going to press and steam. I'm going to press and steam until I've completely fused the entire piece together. All right, so here's how my fabric looks from the right side. You can see it's nice and smooth. There's no ripples or wrinkles pressed into it. And this piece of fabric is now ready to cut out. In this case, I'm cutting out my cuffs. Um, but see how much more manageable the fabric is after it's been interfaced? So if you're working with something tricky, this is a really good way to do it. Um, I might not necessarily have cut out cuffs this way, but I just wanted to show you the technique of fusing and then cutting. Thank you for joining me at J Stern Designs, and I hope to see you next time.